Hey, yo, what's up, LC students? Hey, so excited to worship with you tonight in just a few moments. As you can see, like, this is very, like, we're, we're this is really homey feel, right? Uh, uh, wood pallet wall, there's nothing more homey than wood, right? It's, it's comforting. <laughs> so uh, we're in your house. We're getting ready to worship with you uh, wherever you're at, and I'm so excited for this. And so before we do this, uh, I just want to share a couple of things with you uh, to let you know um, how you can how you can move forward or, or make a, a, a decision and what you can do in that decision if you if you do make a decision. So um, one thing we want to know that for this entire weekend is a couple of things. That one, we can expect God to do something great. God wants to do something great in your life. He wants you to learn something about Him. He wants to learn something about yourself. Uh, and He wants to change us. He wants to change all of us, whether you've been a Christian for um, 10 years or 10 minutes, right? Like He constantly is working in us to change us, to, to let us know that, that we need Him every day. We need His grace. Uh, and so He's also going to change others around us. And so we our prayer is that all across the board, we experience God moving in our lives and the lives of, of people around us. And so that's our hope and our prayer for, prayer for this weekend. And so, uh, guys, if you do make a decision, we want to know about that. We, we would love to know about that. So uh, one thing that you can do, if you do make a decision, uh, you can either comment in, in the in the video uh, comments or we would love for you to go to golakeschurch.com and there is a commit tab. And there you can tell us if you did make a decision. Did you Do you want to follow in believer's baptism? Have you never done that? And you finally said, you know what? Now I've, I've waited long enough. I want to do this. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and I've never been baptized and I want to follow his command in baptism. Or... Uh, maybe maybe you decide tonight that God has changed your heart and you finally realize that you have never accepted King Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life and you want to do that at any point throughout this weekend. You finally realize that your sin is too great. Uh, all, all sin is great. All sin separates us from God, but Jesus came so that we could be reunited once again with God and, glorif uh, and, and be with Him forever, for all of eternity, right? To glorify Him. And so maybe you made that decision to, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And we would love to know about that. We would love to celebrate that with you. So if you made that decision, man, tell us everywhere, right? Tell us in the comments. Tell us in the live chat. But also go to golakeschurch.com and let us know there. Or maybe you have a prayer request. We want to pray for you this weekend. So let us know how we can do that. And so, guys, uh, we absolutely love you. I'm, I'm going to pray for us as we enter into this time of worship. Uh, and let's just ask God to do something big in your life. Are you ready for that? And so let's ask God to, to change us because he constantly wants to do that in our lives to draw us closer to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the love that you have for us. That was evident from the very beginning of, of creation, God. And even to now, right now, God, during house party, you want to show us how much you love us. And God, we pray that we would come out of this weekend changed closer in a deeper relationship with you, with you and with others around us, God. Because we are the body. Even though we are separate right now, God, we are still one together under you, King Jesus. Under the blood that was shed for us, under the truth of the resurrection, and under your kingship as you reign over all creation enthroned in heaven, God. And we love you. We pray for this time. Let us sing praises unto you. Let us draw closer to you, into your presence, God, and learn more about who you are, King Jesus, and how we can be changed by the power of your word and lead others closer to you so that they too might know you as Lord and Savior. We love you and we praise you, King Jesus. In your precious name we pray.
Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there were no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there and thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. I want you to know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man, I tell you, Get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. He amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Hey, what's up, fam? Uh, man, we are so excited to get to worship with you this weekend for House Party. It is just going to be an awesome time. Super thankful for the band leading us in worship uh, and just providing an opportunity this weekend for us to engage in singing praises uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so now we get to engage in opening His Word. And I'm so excited because um, we've, we've decided that uh, throughout House Party, one of the kind of the underlying themes for this is, is just that God meets with us, right? Uh, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He met us, came from heaven uh, down to earth to meet us, to meet us right where we are. And so the hope and the prayer for us, uh, for you this weekend, and even for ourselves to truly know this, is that God is with us. And he wants to meet us no matter where we're at, no matter what we're going through. We can know that he's in control, that he is good, and that he has seen us through this crisis already. Whatever it might be, past, present, and future, God is with us. And he wants to meet us exactly where we are, but he doesn't want to leave us there, right? God's goal and purpose for us is to constantly be growing, moving, changing for the better. That's the process of sanctification. That's the process of, of salvation, right? Until we finally get to the place of glorification, which will happen when we meet him finally face to face in perfection, uh, heaven and heaven come down to, to earth. And so what an, what an amazing thing that is. And so until that day, right, we're still struggling. We're still constantly trying to figure things out. We're still growing. And God meets us every step of the way to help us move forward. And so uh, tonight, I just want to open up God's word with you. And before we do it, and so thank you for Grace uh, uh, reading the text that we'll be in tonight. Uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, before we get into that story, I just want to ask you a couple things. What are some things that at a moment's notice, you would drop literally anything to go and do? All right, maybe, maybe it's, uh, you can hit us up in the, in the comments below even. Tell us what that might be. I don't know about you. For me, here, here's some like maybe my top, top three or four, right? One, Chick-fil-A. Like, it doesn't matter. If it's if it's lunch or not, like I will go at three thirty in the afternoon, right? I will go to Chick Fil A. If Shayla says, "Hey, you want Chick Fil A?" Absolutely, let's go. Uh, I'm so down for that. Uh, I am also down for any time hanging out with my wife Shayla and my little boy Nash. I will drop anything uh, to go and do that, just because I love them so much. I will also. Do whatever I possibly can. We have passes to uh, Universal Studios. I, we will go anywhere, anytime. At any, like we will drop anything and go to Universal Studios. Uh, it is just so much fun. It's like our getaway place, and we love that. Um, and if possible, like to do all three in a day, that would be awesome. Like that's a perfect day. And, and so those are some of the things that I would just at, at, at any possible moment I could, I could drop anything if I could and go and and do those things to engage with those things or those people, right? Now, 
On the flip side, there are also some things that maybe you don't quite don't quite make your list uh, that you want to jump up and straight go and go do right. Like the, you don't want to do that immediately. Maybe that's like take out the garbage. Uh, that's uh, to hang out with your little brother or sister. That's maybe this homework that is like looming over you uh, o before this crazy school year act like finally comes to an end. Maybe you're just procrastinating some. You're, so you're not just super amped to go ahead and get that done or drop everything to go and do that. And, and for me, one of the one of those things that I just push off to the very end, the last possible moment. Is, is probably getting gas. I, I, it, I hate getting gas. I will push that car, my little car, uh, to E and beyond, man. I will take it to its limit until it's running on fuse because it's just, it, honestly, it's inconvenient. I don't want to do it. I don't want to stop. I don't want to pay the money. I just don't want to do it. I just want to go home. I want to hang out with, with Shayla and Nash. I want to go do, I want to go to Chick-fil-A. Like, I want to, I want to do some, something else other than have to go and get gas. And so, because it's inconvenient. And I feel that that, that term inconvenience is something that we constantly face. That feeling of inconvenience is something that we constantly face. And one of the biggest hang-ups uh, that we have when it comes to our relationship with Jesus and other people around us uh, who, who need to know Jesus, who need to see us be Jesus, to shine the light of Jesus. And our mindset is that sometimes it's just inconvenient to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm inconvenienced by this. I don't want, I'd rather do this. I will feel embarrassed if that happens, right? It's, it's this feeling of inconvenience saying, I, it's not worth it. I want to do something else. And, and here's kind of the big overall theme for tonight's message is this. It's, it's following Jesus. Following Jesus isn't, isn't a matter of convenience, it is a matter of commitment and obedience to God. It is commitment over convenience. Forsaking our own desires to follow Jesus, to obey him, to, to receive what he has for our lives, and to tell other people about him and for them to do the same. So we're going to open up God's word together. So open up to Mark chapter 2, verse, verse 1. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Maybe you're hooping and hollering uh, at home right now as you open up God's word. Um, because God's word is exciting and it can change our lives. Right? And that's the cool thing. God, Jesus is the word. And, and he speaks to us. God speaks to us. So his word is so important for our lives. So that's why we open up God's word and that's why we teach it effectively. We understand it correctly, right? And so that's what we're going to do tonight uh, prayerfully. And hopefully, maybe even your, your understanding of who Jesus is, your comprehension of him, your confidence in him will change. And maybe even your life will change as you hand it over to King Jesus. So here we go, Mark chapter 2, uh, verse 1. And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he uh, was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came bringing, and, and they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get him uh, because of the crowd, because they could not get him, uh, get near to him because of the crowd. They removed the roof above him, and when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus perceived in his spirit that they questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose, and immediately picked up his bed, and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. This might be one of my favorite stories uh, in the New Testament. Because here we have a scene, right? So a scene in the life of Jesus where, where notoriety, uh, word of him is spreading 
like wildfire and talk about a, a house party, right, man? So Jesus goes to this house and literally there is standing room only. People are, are falling out the door, right? There's not even enough room to get into the door and people are packed outside of the doorway. And, and in first century Israel culture, you didn't need an invite to the party to show up, right? You just came. Everybody in their family, they just came. They just showed up. And so they packed the house that Jesus found himself in. And, and many people came to Jesus so that they could be healed. They, they knew that he was a, a great man who could do great things. And so many people came out to see him to be healed. But this also meant that some people just wanted to see Jesus heal people. And so what this meant was that the healthy people who could normally maybe get there faster, quicker... Uh, would get there first, and everyone else who really needed to be healed, uh, who couldn't get there as fast, who needed some help, they came in later, and so the order of operation of people who needed to be there was flipped. So the people who just wanted to see Jesus heal people who didn't need healing were up front, and the people who needed healing were hanging out back. And so these four men and their friend who's paralyzed show up, and the Bible doesn't give a backstory to these guys, but in my mind, and I believe, I, I could say with, with some confidence, um, that, that they were great friends. They were amazing friends, maybe friends since childhood, um, and so many years of friendship, right? And so the Bible doesn't say also where they came from, but it does say that they came late, right? Uh, so they showed up late, and by the time they reached the house, it was packed, it was standing room only, and they could not make their way inside of the house to even see Jesus. So, what they do? They packed up, they turned around, and went home. No, right? No, they, they didn't do that. They devised a plan, okay? They, they brainstormed together, they, they talked together, and they drew up a plan to get their friend in front of Jesus so that he could be healed. Houses in the times uh, of this first century uh, Jerusalem, that they had flat roofs, okay, uh, that were usually accessible by an outside stairway, okay? And so the roof of the house also was comprised of, of clay, uh, grass, straw, and, and sticks, large branches, okay? So that was the roof of a, of a house. Uh, so what they did was they, they carried their friend up the, up the stairway to the roof, and they figured out where Jesus was in proximity to the roof, and they started digging, right? They just started tearing away at that roof. And, and they, I, I assume they didn't have tools, right? So they were just digging in with their hands, potentially. And so you can imagine what was going on, the difficulty level of what they were doing, and then imagine yourself inside of the house, right? So all of a sudden you hear this, like, doom, 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 right? Thumping on the roof. Uh, then you start seeing some, like, dust particles come down. Then, like, chunks of, of clay starting to fall. Uh... And it was probably just a little chaotic and a little uneasy at the time. And, and what's fun, to me, I feel like these guys were like the ultimate party crashers. People were there to see Jesus. All of a sudden, these guys are making a hole in this roof. And like <laughs> the owner of the house, like probably pretty upset. I don't know. But man, ultimate party crashers. They didn't care. Why? Why risk it? Why do this? Okay, Here, here's why. And this is important for us to understand. They did this. They risked this. They dared to do this. They went above and beyond. They stuck around. They found Jesus because they understood. They truly knew that Jesus was great. Jesus was great. And even here later, Jesus d displays to the people there that he is God. Now, I don't know if these guys knew that just yet, but they were about to find out. But they did understand everything they knew that Jesus was great and that Jesus was worthy and they wanted to be in his presence. They realized that they had nothing to lose, but they had everything to gain. It was going to be worth it. Why? Because they believed in the greatness and the goodness of Jesus. And so when you and I begin to understand more 
that about who Jesus is, that, that Jesus is God, right? That Jesus is in control, that Jesus is sovereign, that Jesus has all authority, that Jesus is all-knowing, that Jesus is all-powerful, so many different attributes of who Jesus is. When we begin to understand that and live in that, right? Truly live in that daily, this will change how we live our lives, how we make our choices, who we hang around with, what we think, what we say. That will begin to change us from the inside out if we understand who Jesus is. And so what, you, what, what are you and I willing to do? To, to sacrifice. What are we willing to sacrifice? How are we willing to be inconvenienced because of the greatness of King Jesus? In, in what ways are we willing to, to let go of our selfish desires to see God do great things in our lives and in the lives of our friends and people around us? Because people are worth it. Guys, you, you are worth it. Jesus demonstrated that. And we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. But, but even you're worth it. But, and people in our lives are worth it. Those in our lives are worth being inconvenienced for. These four guys were, were, were willing to risk it all, to be inconvenienced, to take the time to do this for their paralyzed friend. What are you willing to do to bring people into the presence of King Jesus? Are you willing to change some of the ways that you act, you think? What are you willing to change? Because it's worth it. Because Jesus is God. Jesus is great. And, and they worked together. They worked together and they dared to do something different. Something that no one had, had done, right? And they dared to do something different. And I truly believe that every single student, every single teenager who is watching, who will watch, who, who won't watch, right? Every single one of you have the capacity, listen, to change the world. I truly believe that. Through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit in you, you have the capacity to change the world for King Jesus and, and like turn the world upside down just like the Bible describes the disciples in Acts 17, 6. People accuse them to, of turning the world upside down. And honestly, guys, the disciples were not much older than you. In fact, some of them may be about the same age. These guys, these ragtag group of disciples who followed Jesus, turned the world upside down. We can do that too. You can do that too for Jesus as you obey and commit to follow him. Will you work together? Will, will you dare to do something different? It takes willingness to work together and it takes, and, and it takes uh, uh, just a, a faith to dare to step out for Jesus. And so these men were willing to bring their friends, uh, their friend to Jesus so that his life could be changed. We are called to be fishers of men. And this is, this is what these men were, were doing. And to bring people in our lives to see Jesus and to know his salvation. This is the purpose for our lives. God has commanded us to go and make disciples, to go and tell people of the good news of Jesus Christ. In, in all capacities. And, and this is how we can truly feel closest to God when we do this. We are closest to God when we are pursuing his kingdom. Have you ever just wanted to be close to God? A lot of times we feel we want that, but we're not willing to seek commitments over convenience. Because following G Jesus isn't a matter of convenience. It is a matter of commitment and obedience to him. So not only did this group of friends dare to do something radical, they believed, and they, as they believed in the greatness of Jesus, but they also believed in the value of their friends. They believed in his worth. Finding our worth and value in this world is a dangerous game to play. You will never find, uh, you'll never find it. You'll never find it in sports. You'll never find it on the numbers on the scale. You'll never find it in the amount of money you have or the amount of friends or followers that you have. All that is temporary and so is its, so is its satisfaction. It's all temporary. And, and Jesus revealed to this man and his friends who valued him enough to go and do this, to be inconvenienced, right? They valued him enough to do that. Jesus wanted to show this man where his true value and worth 
was found. Because Jesus met this young man right where he was, right? He, even though it was, it was weird and awkward and, and they lowered him in front of Jesus, Jesus met this man right where he was. He didn't, he didn't get on to him. Uh, he, he welcomed him. And he saw him, this man, full of value and worth. Because also understand that Jesus as God created this man had a plan for this man, had a purpose for this young man. And, and this worth that Jesus had for him was only found in what Jesus could provide. The men brought this, their friend down so potentially that he could walk. But his value wasn't found in walking. It wasn't found in what he could do. It was found in what, has been, uh, what could be done for him through Jesus Christ. It, Christ. it was the understanding that he could be freed from the penalty of of his sins. So when Jesus saw this man, everyone's, I'm sure, their automatic response and thinking of this was like, ooh, oh my goodness, Jesus is going to heal this man, and we're going to see a paralyzed man walk. And I bet they got super excited, right? But Jesus' purpose in coming to earth, dying on the cross, being placed in the tomb, resurrecting from that tomb and, tomb and, and, and living again was was, was not just to see uh, sick people become better. Right? He, he came, no, that wasn't his purpose. He came to seek and to save the lost. What would it matter for if Jesus healed this man and he could walk, but his life was still on a course destined for eternity away from God in hell? Like, so what he, if he can walk if he's just going to spend eternity, eternity away from God. We don't want to make just good people. Jesus didn't want to make good people or healthy people. He wanted to save people and set them free from their sin. So Jesus healed this man in the only way that it truly mattered. Jesus showed this man his value and his worth in a way that was only possible through him. And he freed him from the penalty of his sins. That's what he did. He, he said, first, son, your sins are forgiven. Following Jesus isn't a matter of convenience. It's a matter of commitment and obedience to him. And Jesus spoke to this man. And the Bible says he... He, he, he was forgiven. And then there's some just crusty religious leaders. And I think this can be some of us sometimes. That we see Jesus do great things. We, we, we come to church and we see people living for Jesus. And we're like, dude, you're just crazy. You are over the top. It's not worth it. Or we just live like these guys just did not see the, the value of Jesus. They did not understand the greatness of Jesus. They thought they understood religious things. They went to church and the synagogue all the time, but they did not commit and glorify and obey Jesus. So they're crusty. And Jesus says, all right, well, which is easier? For me to forgive, for, for me to say, I, hey, I forgive your sins, or to, to say, hey, get up and walk? Because in the mindset, you could say, hey, your sins are forgiven. Who would know that in that moment? God alone. God alone would, and that's why they were kind of mad. It's like, hey, listen, only God is able to forgive sins, and only God can know that. And so Jesus said, okay, because he, he had forgiven that young man of his sins. So what would, be, what would be easier would be to just say, hey, your sins are forgiven because there's you, you, only the inward person can know that, and only God can know that. No one else around. So Jesus said, well, the harder thing would be to, for me to say, hey, get up, pick up your bed, and walk. So that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus told the man to arise, and he got up. And his life was not only changed by inwardly, but outwardly. All right, His heart was changed, his, changed, his sins were forgiven, his eternity was set forth in God to be with him forever in glory. But now here on earth, he was able to walk. Not only live in freedom, but walk, truly walk in freedom, And when that happened, he listened, the young man listened, and he obeyed, committed to God with a new life in Jesus. And because of that, the Bible says that all those who, who watched were amazed and glorified God. How can you and I work together with other Christians at church and at school 
to dare to do something for the kingdom of God, to turn this world upside down so that others might glorify God as well, so that others might be set free from the power of sin by King Jesus because of our obedience and our commitment to him. This is our mission. Right? This is our mission, to follow Jesus in obedience and commitment, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and his salvation, and help people to live for them, to turn this crazy world upside down. God meets us right where we are. How are you going to respond to that? How will that change you tonight? In a moment, uh, we're going to get to, to go to our, our Zoom small groups, and we're going to discuss this a little bit more. So, uh, But prayerfully, we hope that, man, like we will understand the, the greatness of Jesus. We will understand our true value, that it's not found in what we do, but it's found in Christ alone. And that we will be people who spread the gospel to help other people glorify God. Guys, we love you. We're so thankful. I'm going to pray, and then um, we will... Uh, if you need any help, get into your Zoom small groups. Make, make sure to comment or uh, message us on our social media. So let's pray. God, we love you. Lord, we thank you. You are good. God, you are, you are, you are great King Jesus, and you are all-powerful. You are all-knowing, God. And, and we thank you for your greatness and that you meet us in your greatness right where we are at, where, where we are at. In, our, in our weakness, in our helplessness, God, in our lostness. And you bring salvation to us. And as those who live in that, God, we pray that we would be takers and bringers of the gospel to other people so that they too can glorify you. God, show us our value. Show us of the value of others around us, that, the value that you have for them. And, and help us to, to relay the good news so that others may be saved and so that your name may be glorified. We love you, King Jesus, and we pray all this to your name.
body there. 